If you're a music producer and you use vocals of any sort in your music, learning how to mix vocals properly is an essential skill for a music producer. Now, whether you're using vocals from Splice or Loot Cloud, or you're recording them yourself, or getting them sent from a singer elsewhere in the world, vocals are usually the most important part of a track, not always, but usually. So learning how to mix vocals so they sound perfect in your mix is a super important skill that I'm gonna teach you how to do today. I'm Will from EDM Tips, and over the last six years, I've helped thousands of bedroom music producers just like you get their music to a professional level and released on some of the world's biggest labels. Today I'm going to share with you my five-step vocal processing system that's going to get your vocals sounding amazing. So let's have a listen to the vocals before we go through these five steps. Baby, I'm different. So different. I'm it's a pretty good vocal, so it sounds okay on its own, but let's listen to it once we've applied this five-step system. Baby, So they sound way better, way smoother, way cleaner and crisper and they sit perfectly in the mix and that's what you're going to be able to do after today's video. Now every one of these five steps is essential to getting your vocals sound professional. If you miss any one of these steps, you could ruin the whole process so make sure you watch the whole video. You can also check out my $10,000 music production giveaway by clicking the link that's popping up now, there or there. And you can download my essential mixing guide for free below this video too. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so we've got this melodic house track that I've been working on and I've just brought in some vocals from Loot Cloud. So let's have a listen to the vocals on their own at the moment. Baby, I'm different. So different. I'm head over heels in love with you. So the first step in my five step system is to fix the vocals before we do any of the polishing or the mixing part. So we've got to determine what's wrong. Now, these are sung pretty well. If you record vocals with a singer that's perhaps not quite so good at singing, or even a really good singer that just makes a couple of mistakes, pitch correction is one of the first things that you need to fix. But there are a couple of other things that usually need fixing in this first stage as well. First is EQing out some of the low rumble that will usually come through. And the second is using a noise gate to get rid of some of the background noise. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do all of these things in the fixing step and then we're gonna go on to the next part of the five step process. So if we listen really carefully, we can hear this background noise in the studio here. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that by using a noise gate. Now, any door has a built-in noise gate. You don't need a third party one, but if you are gonna use a third party one, the FabFilter one's really nice, it's got lots of control. So let's have a look at this gate and get rid of this noise. So you can see the signal is showing up here, very quiet, and we can't hear anything because the gate is turning everything off. The trouble is, it's set too high at the moment, so the vocals are being cut out too. A gate basically just allows the volume above the threshold to be let through, and anything below, it shuts it out like a gate. So let's take this threshold down so it's just covering the, the background noise. So that's obviously too low. We can still hear it. Let's just bring it up a bit. There we go. So now when we hear the singing. So different. I'm head over heels in love with you. And then it shuts out all of the background noise when she's not singing. I'm just gonna smooth it a little bit so it opens a bit smoother and closes a bit smoother just by adding some attack. I'm head I'm head over heels in love with you. Okay, so that's the noise gate done. On to the next part, and that is. Ooh, let's get rid of the some of the low rumble. So we're just going to use a normal EQ8. And let's see what's going on. We've got all this low end energy that we really don't need, especially not for a female vocal. So I would usually roll off at, at about 60 hertz. I'm head over. If you roll off too high, then you can get rid of some of the bass energy. For this vocal, actually, because it's a female vocal, we could probably roll I'm off a bit higher. Heels in love with you. About 130 hertz. If it was a deep male vocal, you might want to be rolling off a little bit lower than that, uh, but that's fine for this. Now, the next thing I want to fix is the pitch, as we talked about. Now, you do really need a third party plugin for this. I'm going to be using Antares Auto Tune, and you can get that from below this video as well. This is like one of the it's the industry leading one. There are a couple of others as well, like the Waves uh, real-time plugin, but this one does get slightly better results. And before this, 
you can use uh, Celimony Melodyne as well, but that's something for another video. So if you want me to make a video on that, let me know. So I'm just going to throw this auto tune in. I know that this track is in the key of D major. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that key, D major. I'm head over heels in love with you. And if you turn it right up the retune speed, then you get that share kind of I believe T pain effect. But we don't want that. I'm head over heels in love with you. It's a bit too extreme, so I'm just going to dial it back so it still sounds natural, and that's just going to make everything perfectly in tune. Well, so not perfectly in tune. Different. I'm head over heels in love with you. It's a really simple plugin to use, and you get instant results. So on to the next thing, and that would be DSing. Now, the reason I'm DSing at the beginning of this chain is because, and by the way, DSing is when the s and the p and the, the sibilance and the plosives are too loud in the vocals. So that's something worth noting as well. Before all of this, the thing to do is to make sure that you've done volume automation. So all the words are roughly the same kind of volume. And then you can take down the breathing sounds or you can pronounce them if you want to do that effect. But it's worth spending the time doing that. This has already been done on this vocal, so I'm not going to do it. But that's something I missed a second ago. So let's get rid of the S's. So if we go to a point where there's an S. I'm head over heels in love with you. So, love. so this S is a little bit loud for me. So what I'm going to do is add a deesser. Now the deesser I use is the Fab Filter deesser. Uh, it's really good. So um, let's just find that. Fab filter DS. That's probably in compression. Here we go. And if we look at what's happening, whoops. And I'm head over heels and love, heels and love, heels and You can see it's picking up where the S is going. And that's set to the threshold. I'm head over heels so I'm gonna, love. I don't want it happening when the S isn't being sung. And I'm head over heels and love, heels and love. And then this second knob here, the range, is going to determine how much that S is taken down in volume. And you don't want to do it too much because it sounds unnatural like this. And I'm head over heels and love, 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 heels and love. So that's just adding a little bit of DSing to take the edge off the S. And now our vocals are pretty much been fixed. We've got rid of the frequencies we don't need. And if there are any frequencies that have been picked up in the room that is very pronounced. That would be called like a resonant frequency, and you can do some surgical EQ for that. Again, this vocal was recorded in a good studio, so I don't think there's any I can hear. Different, different, baby, I'm di okay, that's a little bit harsh. Baby, I'm, baby, I'm so what I'm going to do is just sweep around with a very narrow Q curve like this. Again, you could use the Fab Filter Pro Q3, that's a great EQ, or just any EQ that comes with, uh, with your door. Let's try and find that baby, um, baby, nasal. Um, baby, 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 um, baby. That's it. Where she's going, baby. It's just sounds a bit nasty. So now we found it. We're just going to notch it down a little bit. Baby, um, 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 baby, um. So this is without it. Baby, um, 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 baby, um. So now it's a little bit smoother. We've got rid of that horrible resonant frequency. Okay, so now this is all pretty much fixed. I'm going to just minimize those and we move into the second stage of my mixing system for vocals, and that is adding body. So we want to just get this a bit fuller. We're going to add some harmonics to it. And by far and away, the best plugin I like for this is the Inflator by Sonox Oxford. That's actually part of the gift in the $10,000 giveaway. So you can check that video out wherever it's popping up. Let's just find that. We're going to our saturators. We're going to go to the Oxford Inflator. And now we're into the second stage 
So I'll just group these together actually, this, these first ones. And now we can see that this is our fixed stage. And now we're on to the body stage. Baby, I'm different. Baby, I'm different. So different. So this is just adding some extra harmonics and, and making the sound a bit richer and a bit fuller. So let's listen to it turned off. So different. Now off. So different. On. So different. So it's very subtle, but I found the Oxford inflator is really good because it doesn't add any audible kind of saturation or grunginess, which some saturators will. So this is really good for vocal processing. Now, the next thing that we want to do in terms of the body is make sure that this hasn't added any frequencies we don't want because saturation by definition adds more frequencies. So we just need to make sure we've got them rolled off. Baby, I'm different. Down here where it's added some more. Baby, I'm different. So different. Okay, so that was very quick, very simple. Just taking out the low end that the saturator added. And now we are going to add the dynamics. So this is where we decide how big the dynamic range of our vocals are. And at the beginning, if you remember, I said the best thing to do is go through and automate everything very carefully with just the gain plugin like the utility. So you can bring up certain words, make other ones quieter and get it evened out as much as you can before using compression. And now we can move to compression. Now the compressors I like to use is the, let's see, uh, the Renaissance vocals from Waves. And you can get all of these below this video as well. But this is a really nice transparent compressor. It doesn't add much character to it, but it just smooths it out a bit. Now, how much compression you need will depend on the vocals you've recorded, the type of music that you're, you're creating, because sometimes you want them to be really pushed, like if it's a big, loud EDM track, but you want it to be much more subtle if it's like a jazz track, for example. So I'm just going to add, say, two or three decibels of gain reduction with this. Baby, I'm different. Baby, I'm different. So different. I'm head over heels in love with you. So this is off. Baby, I'm different. And this is on. Baby, I'm different. Now, that is not like a setting that's going to work for all vocals. Sometimes you're going to have to push them harder. Sometimes you might want to use two compressors in a row. And if you want video on how to use vocal compressors specifically, I can make a specific video on that. So let me know in the comments below. But what I'm going to do now is add the special source. This is one of my favorite plugins for vocals, if not the favorite plugin for vocals. It just makes them sound good immediately. So before I put it on, let me know if you're enjoying this video so far, guys. Give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother. And I switched that around, didn't I? And yeah, let me know what you want me to make a video about because I read all the comments and I really appreciate you taking part. So this is the, the plugin I'm talking about. It's called CLA Vocals and it is by Waves. And what I do is I just throw it on after the compression. This also has a compressor in it. But what I do is then I turn off the reverb because I want to be handling the reverb later on. I'm going to show you how to do it. Everything else can be left on. So let's just turn this on as we play through the vocals and have a listen. Baby, I'm different. Let's turn it on. Baby, I'm different. So it instantly adds width. Baby, I'm different. It just smooths things out a bit with the compression, adds a little bit of width because of this slap delay and this stereo. And it's just a fantastic plugin. I put this on every vocal I do now. So we're now onto the next stage. We've done the fix, we've done the body, we've done the dynamics. Now we're onto the polish. And that's where we really want to get our EQ just right before we go on to the mixing stage, which is the final part of it. So now let's add an EQ, which I absolutely love for vocals, which is the API 550A, again by Waves. I'm going through all my third party ones that I, I really use here. And this is great for adding some air, which will take me on to the next plugin. In fact, before this, yeah, I'm going to add the fresh air by Slate Digital. This is a great plugin as well. It just, well, adds some fresh air as you'd expect. So I'm going to put this before the, that EQ. 
And now what we're going to do is just dial in a bit of this high air gain. Baby, I'm different. So different. I'm head over heels in love with you. So you can hear it's just quite subtle, but listen to the difference it makes on this U. I'm just going to loop it, turn it off, and then on. Ooh, ooh, now on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It just adds that breathiness to the vocals. It's so nice. Now, the volume is all getting a bit high now. You know, if we group these together and listen to where we were at the beginning, you'll hear that our vocals are a lot louder now. Baby, I'm different. They sound amazing already. So different. But what I want to do is get the vocals gain staged properly, and you can check out my video on gain staging that I made the other week as well. I'm just going to take the volume down. I could do it with the trim within the plugin, but I'm going to do it just so you can see what I'm doing. I want this now to be about the same volume it was before we started any processing. So let's take it off and have a look. Baby, I'm different. Hitting about minus 5.8, so let's just match that. Baby, I'm different. Baby, I'm different. Baby, I'm different. So this is where we were before. Baby, I'm different. And now at the exact same volume, or roughly the same volume. Baby, I'm different. We can hear it sounding much better. Okay, now let's use this API 550 that I talked about. So we're going to put that, that on. We'll put this in the chain as well. And then what I can do there is add a little bit more air if I want on the vocals. It might be too much. Now we've got the fresh air plug-in. But I also like to take out a little bit of low end as well. It just makes it sound nicer. Baby, I'm different. Baby, I'm different. So that's just adding four decibels at five Baby, I'm different. kilohertz. Baby, I'm different. I'm also going to take it down four decibels at 50 hertz. Baby, I'm different. It's just a nice way to... So different. To I'm... just add a little bit more sparkle. This might be too much. And I'm going to show you in the mixing stage how we can actually turn these off whilst we're in the mix because not this chain, whilst the steps in the chain are going to be the same for every vocals, the amount that you apply the plugins is going to be different for every vocal and as I say, different for every track as well. So once you've got it sounding good on its own, it's important we'll then get into the mixing stage to get it to sit with everything else. But let's go on to that stage now, in fact. So now we are on to the, the mixing stage. We want to have it sit in the mix. So there are a few things this is definitely going to need. It's going to need some more equalization because we want to take out frequencies that might be clashing with other parts of the mix. We are going to use the Soothe 2 plugin, which is just going to be taking off the edge that all some of this additive EQ has done, where we've added some high frequencies. And then we're going to add some sidechain compression, some reverb and delay as well. So let's crack on and get to it. Let's just loop this part of the track with everything on, and I'm going to bring the vocals up slowly. Okay, it's quite quiet actually, because I'm mixing this at proper levels. Um, so what I'll do to make things a bit louder, I'm just going to add a volume boost on that channel, on the master channel. So we're bumping up about minus six. And you can click on my mixing mistakes video that I made a couple of weeks ago. One of the most popular actually. So now we've got about minus six on the master. That's perfect. Let's bring in these vocals. And I'm going to do this in mono. So on the master channel, I've also got this mono switch here, which just changes the whole mix to mono, like so. And that's going to make it easier to judge the levels and the frequencies that these vocals should be hitting. So let's bring it up. the vocals about the right level first. Baby, I'm they already sound nice. So this is where they were before. Baby, I'm A bit harsh. So and 
are now much smoother. That's lush, man. What a beautiful song, if I don't mind saying so myself. Okay, so what we need to do when it comes to mixing is we'll, we'll add a little bit of EQ. And I'm just going to use another EQ8 and see if... See, there are a few more low frequencies here. We're just going to take those out again. And I might just take... At this point, you can decide to add some more body, like so. Uh, let's just make... If you want, but again, this is a like a nice mix already. Or you could add some extra air. Now, this goes on to my next point, which is using the Soothe 2, because if you do decide to add a little bit more air at this point, either with one of your analog model plugins like the API 550A, or with a digital EQ, and I would usually use the analog ones, they've just got a bit of a nicer feel. This is when you can use the Soothe 2 to have it sit a little bit better as well. Now, for this vocal, I'm going to go into the presets, I'm going to go to vocal presets, and I'm just going to use the there's a de here, but there's like a, I thought there was an invisible one. Invisible de here we go. So let's just listen to the difference it makes. Baby, I'm different. So different. This is off. Baby, I'm different. The t different. So different. So let's just loop that so, so you can hear what's happening. Just loop that, man. Listen to the S. So it's basically another de that we've added just because we've added some more high frequencies and it's just going to smooth everything off a bit. So if you think of the vocal like a piece of clay, we are just working it, getting it to the right shape. Now we're kind of at the polishing stage and then getting it to sit with everything else. So yeah, now after that, well, as simple as adding some reverb, some delay, and then I've got a few more tricks to show you as well. So let's create our own vocal reverb channel and a vocal delay channel. Now this is important. Usually the vocals um, are their own thing in the track and you want them to have their own reverb so you can get just the right settings. So let's just, first we'll add the reverb. And for this, I'm going to use the Fab Filter. No, I'm going to use the Pro Q just for something a bit different because I haven't used that for ages. I'm going to use the Fab Filter Pro Q. Uh, sorry, Pro R, which is a reverb unit. I'm going to have a look through their presets. I want a big one for this track, so I'm going to go to Vocal Hall Bright, 100% wet. Here we go because it's on an auxiliary channel, we don't want that vocal, the dry vocal coming through. And again, I'm gonna keep this in mono for now so I can get the levels of the reverb right. So So the reason that I've pushed it so hard is so I can hear the amount of time it's taking decay, I can get the settings right, and then I can dial it back to the sweet spot. So after this, I'm just gonna put on an EQ, make sure the low end is taken out. Now the next thing I'm gonna do for the vocal reverb is to put a compressor and then take the side chain input for the dry vocals. There we go. And that's so I can duck the um, the reverb very slightly. So like 
think so. So when she's singing, you can hear her vocals more. And then when she stops singing, the, the reverb is louder. Now the last thing we're going to add to this is the delay and a really good delay to use is the Sound Toys Little Echo Boy but I'm going to use the Ableton Echo which is another great one. So let's put this on here. I'm just going to choose ping pong mode so it bounces left and right. Make sure I don't take out too much of the high end. Dial in the stereo field and then choose the right step that you want for the delay. Again, 100% wet, so we're not doubling up the dry signal. And I go, I'm going to switch to mono to get the, the right settings. So and I'm going to smooth off the delay a little bit by using a reverb after the delay, again, on that same auxiliary channel. So let's have a listen. So different, so different. I'm head over heels in love with you. So it's just smoothed off the delay a bit. And I'm going to use the exact same compressor I used for the reverb, the sidechain compressor, to duck the delays when the vo dry vocal is singing as well. So different. I'm head over heels in love with you. So you can see the delays are quiet when she's singing and then louder when she stops singing. Uh, and let's just throw an EQ on there, make sure that we're not hitting any. Um, so different. No, that's I'm fine. So now let's listen to it all in the mix in stereo. Nice. Okay, on to the next bit. And we're almost finished with my vocal chain. We've gone through the fix, the body, the dynamics, the polish, and the mix. So the last thing I'm going to do is just a couple of little tricks. The last thing for the mix is adding a sidechain compressor so it kind of bounces with the beat. And again, this totally depends on the style of music you're making. I'm going to use the LFO tool here. But you could use Nicky Romero's Kickstart. You could use a sidechain compressor triggered from the kick. It's just to make the vocal bounce a bit. So if we listen to it, like this, and it's going to help it sit, sit in the mix. So this is without the LFO tool. Baby, I'm different. And now let's turn the LFO tool on. Baby, I'm different. So now it's bouncing with the mix. I'm just going to dial in a little bit of that whilst it's playing to find the sweet spot. So we need to play everything at the same time. You could also add that same LFO tool to the delay if you wanted, which can be quite nice and make that delay bounce. Now the last thing, the very last thing I'm going to do is add some extra body to this. And this really is a different lesson altogether, but I'm going to duplicate that entire vocal chain. My CPU isn't going to be thanking me. So now we've got a secondary one. What I'm going to do now is pitch it down by 12 semitones. It has to be warped, of course, or you could use little altar boy to do this by sound toys and I'm just going to play with the formants. So now we've got this octave lower and what we're going to do is just feed that into the mix at specific points and that's just going to add some extra weight and body to the vocal. So let's have a listen. And you probably want to automate this LFO tool to be off in the breaks and only come in when the kick is there. I'm 
are going to bring in this low vocal very soon. Not yet though. Let's put the LFO tool on now. So you can hear the difference it makes. And this is perfect for choruses. Just use it in special places where you want those vocals, vocals, vocals? What? Vocals to be thicker. Baby, I'm different. I'm different. So different. I'm head of a heels in love with you. So there you have it guys, that is my, yeah, that's my professional vocal processing and vocal mixing chain. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out my mixing guide that's completely free below this video. And more importantly, don't forget to check out my $10,000 giveaway. I've linked to that around this video as well, where you can enter the competition, submit your music. We're gonna judge it, we're gonna vote on it, and the winners get some insane prizes. And if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, if you want to get your music to a professional level, check out my accelerator program below this video too. Okay, until next time, thank you so much for watching and until then, cheers and happy producing.